Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dan. Uh, I'm the owner of Dancing 3D Prints. I uh, wanted to give you guys a quick update and tour of our warehouse, our 3D print farm. Um, I've been 3D printing for about eight years now. And for the past couple of years, I had my print farm in the basement of my home. But so recently, about earlier this year, I decided to get a commercial space and move 3D printers out of the basement of my home and into this 2,000 square foot space. So here in this video, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick tour of where we are. We've been expanding and moving things around. If you check my page, I have a previous video of the print farm I did a tour a while back. So this is gonna be the updated one, probably the final configuration of what we have here. So let's get right into it. All right, so as we enter, um, the entrance is the same here. We have this entryway uh, where, we, where I have some of my older 3D prints here. Uh, that I've made over the years. And this is just a display area. There's some cool multicolor 3D prints. Uh, this is the Marble Run from Bamboo Studio. Over here, right next to it is Evan's desk. This is where he has a computer. He decides to not have a chair here for some reason. That's up to him. And coming across straight to our left as we enter, these are just bins, storage bins of product. This rack here is all product. This is our exhaust fan over here. And so we'll get kind of right into it. Along the side here, these are all P1P printers. And then in the middle, these are all A1 combo printers. So our original footprint was we had two racks here. But you'll see that over the past few weeks, we decided to expand to a third shelf. So the, in the middle here, we have a row of three shelves. So one, two, three, and three wide as well. And in the middle, it's all A1 combo printers. You'll see, I'll give you, um, once I come back in the middle here, this rack is just all plastic, 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 plastic. Um, we also have plastic on top of the racks for the A1s, where the A1s are. And I'll get to that in a second. But over here, uh, this is a configuration pretty much for every shelf. We have two A1s per shelf, per row. And then there's a UPS unit in the middle that powers all six of them. And a view from the back, you'll see here that all six are plugged into the battery side. So basically whenever we have power blips or minor power outages, the printers will still run for about 15 minutes or so. Um, but it's really not meant for a long-term storage, uh, a long-term solution. It's really meant for power blips. Uh, I've had maybe four or five since I've moved into this space. And before I had the UPS, basically all the printers were shut off. Um, even though we didn't lose power, we just had like a minor power flickering. Um, so that's why I decided to get the UPS units. You'll see even on the P1Ps, I have uh, UPS units per rack here. Um, so these are all P1Ps, you'll see here. And then the middle are all A1 combos. We use these giant totes from Costco to store product in. Right now, we're just mass producing these eggs and getting ready for Q4. We have our minis on a lot of these A1 combo printers. Um, and these are all able to print in multicolor. So that's why we got the A1 combos. And again, you'll see on top, all of these are laid down with the filament to reduce vibration and shaking a little bit. And these are just empty boxes in case we need to return any of the A1 combos for now. We'll keep them for now. Um, down the line, we'll, sh we'll use these as shipping boxes to just uh, get rid of space and use more space for plastic. Um, and you'll see that we have uh, extension cords running on top here, yellow extension cords running from each rack. And I'll show you where these yellow extension cords lead, but you'll see that they, they're all over here. And so as we enter towards the back of the warehouse, this is just a shelf of storage finished product. This is my original shelf for the A1 combos, but these are all top mounted with the AMS. So you'll see I'll be, I'm able to fit three per row and then a UPS to power all six of these. I decided to just leave this configuration as it is uh, I do lose the uh, top shelf there, storage, but um, I don't have, I could buy another shelf and disassemble these top mounts, but I just decided to leave them for now. It's fine. And over here, these are our brand new six, P, uh, six P1Ps that we just bought during Bamboo Labs anniversary sale. And then down here, we have two loaner A1 combos. By the way, I bought about 20 A1 combo printers within the last three weeks when Bamboo Labs, was, uh, they were running the anniversary sale. So great time to pick up a Bamboo Lab P1P or an A1 or an X1 or P1S, Bamboo printer in general. Um, down here we have more storage bins of product. 
And then more plastic, this is all plastic. Uh, we have loose rolls here and also uh, full rolls, uh, rolls or plastic over here. We have close to about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 rolls with some more rolls on the way. I'm probably gonna put in another order now in case I need it during December. Hopefully it would get here in time. The shelf is all of our X1 Carbon and P1 S printers. These are all the printers that can print up to eight colors. So I have JMSs hooked up to each of these. So these two are hooked up to this guy. These two are hooked up to this guy. These two here are hooked up to that guy. So on and so forth. As we get back to this side, towards the back, these are all P1Ps on this side and also in the middle. All P1Ps, more product, shelving, product. This X1 Carbon is paused right now. There's something stuck in there. So just easily. Looks like some plastic got stuck behind here. This is our poop situation there. Let's just restart this guy. We're in. We'll be good to go. So as we enter towards the middle of the warehouse, you'll see that here we just have uh, three racks. This is where all of our mini animals live. All of them are labeled in boxes. Below here is all just storage, bins of storage. And I love using these Costco totes. They're super busy and I made the shelving so that each row can accommodate these big totes. So if we ever fill up with product, we can just store the product here. Um, I'm actually uh, running low on some totes, so I might buy some more from Costco when they're on sale. And this is the view from back. These are the A1 combos. And you'll see that the yellow extension cords, they all run on top and then it loops back here all the way down through the floor. And then they all get looped through between these two shelves all the way to the back over there. So let's go take a look. Um, this is our electrical setup. So these outlets are all running to their own 20 amp breaker. So we're able to run right now. It's kind of, I'm only running six printers per outlet uh, for the A1 combos. I can probably add more down the line. I might add some more printers in this space here um, just to fully utilize the electrical setup I have. Um, this is kind of setup is just extension cords running to the outlets. Um, the other ones are run. This is the electrical box. So the other ones, they have outlets behind the walls along the wall. So this is our packing station. Packing station, we have products. This is where things get assembled. And then we do a lot of uh, UPS pickups. So we're right by the bay door, which is right there. And we'll just stack the UPS boxes here for pickup. So that's what this area looks like. Over here, we moved um, one of the racks over here. And this is our area for boxes. Um, we have all types of boxes here that we ship stuff out. Uh, these boxes are all from Uline. So these are sort of unique size boxes that we use for specific things. Um, this, these long boxes we use for the guardian swords. And then over here towards our shipping station, um, this is where we keep more boxes. Um, this is all boxes for the 3D from the 3D printers that we reuse to ship out. This in general is our sh shipping station. We have finished product on this table over here. So it's kind of easier in terms of when we're shipping stuff. But pretty much everything in terms of shipping needs are here. We have our tape, glue, scissors, rolls. This is our computers. We have two Rolo 3D Rolo thermal printers. One is for our, these FN SKU labels. If you know what these are, these are for Amazon. And then one is for our four by six labels, shipping labels. And then down here is just you know, a regular printer and then all, all different types of uh, padding and other material. This table is also from Uline. Uh, this table over here, is from FlexiSpot and raise up and down. Uh, right now I have it at the lowest height so I can put stuff on top and we have boxes here. Uh, just to simplify and make the workflow a little bit more efficient. All right, and towards the back corner here, this is uh, our bathroom. We have a bath full bathroom here. Sorry, not full bath, it's just a toilet and a sink. This is my table, my work area where we uh, where I'll slice the files and everything. It's all a mess here. And then back here we have a little bit more storage space back there. That is uh, the quick tour of the space. It's changed drastically since we moved in here and I'm constantly adding new printers. Uh, but I think right now, I think this is going to be it in terms of the amount of printers we have in here and the setup. Uh, I think if my calculation is correct, we had 126 printers previously. Uh, I ordered six more P1Ps, so that's 132. And then I ordered 15 more A1 combos. So we should be at 147 3D printers in this space. And it's pretty much almost half half between P1Ps and A1 combos, honestly. And the reason uh, a lot of people ask, you know, I get the A1s over the P1Ps, just to be able to print in multicolor. 
And also I print primarily in PLA. So just for the price of what you can get for the A1 combo, it's, it's really a no brainer if you want to print in PLA and print in multicolor. Um, I do have the P1S and the X1 carbons for enclosures if I needed them. I just don't, I don't need the enclosures. You'll see that a lot of, actually not a lot, all of them I took off the front plate because I don't, it was kind of a safety hazard actually for opening the uh, front glasses and sometimes hitting your head on them while you're on the, on the bottom here. So I took them all off. Um, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything I can do to maybe improve the space, uh, make things a little bit more efficient, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more, more 3D printed and business related information and content, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.